Good evening and welcome to day number six of John Durham's trial against Mr. Michael Sussman, who is of course the former Clinton campaign lawyer who is being charged for lying to the FBI. And, well, just as expected, this trial is beginning to shed quite a bit of light on what was really happening behind the scenes, both during the 2016 election, as well as beyond, into Donald Trump's actual presidential term in office. Now, specifically, the biggest bombshell to have come out of this case, at least thus far, is the fact that according to the testimony of the Clinton campaign manager, it was Hillary herself who approved giving the Trump-Russia allegations to the media. It was not some lower-level aide, it was not some advisor, it was not some random staff member. No, it was Hillary Clinton herself. Now, again, to be fair, up until this moment, that's what a lot of people suspected anyway. However, this is the first official on-the-record confirmation of this actually being the case. Now, the man who was giving this testimony is named Robbie Mook. You can see him up on screen for yourself. And during the 2016 presidential race, he was the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton. And the reason that I wanted to point that out, the reason I believe it's relevant, is because it's worth highlighting that Mr. Robbie Mook was not a low-level intern. He was not some mid-level advisor. This man was instead the top dog. He was quite literally the manager of the overall presidential campaign. And last Friday, when he testified on the witness stand in Durham's trial, well, Mr. Robbie Mook revealed the fact that Hillary Clinton personally approved the plan to spread the false documents to the media, which purportedly showed that Trump was somehow colluding with Russia through secret servers set up between Trump Tower and a Russian bank. Now, recording of any kind was not allowed in the courtroom, and so we only have a handwritten transcript of this exchange. And so what we here at the Epic Times did was that we recorded our own version of this testimony. Take a listen. And for your reference, by the way, the female voice will be the lawyer on John Durham's team, and the male voice is the Clinton campaign manager. In the summer of 2016, was Mr. Trump's relationship with Russia something that the campaign focused on? Yes. I mean, it was frankly something we were focused on before that time, but absolutely. And once you learned about it, the Trump-Russia allegations, you started discussing with the campaign whether the campaign should affirmatively push it in the media, right? Correct. And you had that discussion with Mr. Sullivan? Correct. With Mr. Podesta? Just to be clear, this is what I recall those people correct. Okay. You had a discussion with Mr. Sullivan? Yes. I recall, yes. Whether to push it in the media, right? Correct. With Ms. Palmieri? Correct. With Mr. Podesta? Correct. But in any event, the decision to provide this to the media was authorized by the campaign, correct? We authorized a staff member of the campaign to provide it to the media. Mr. Mook, before the break, you had testified that there was a conversation in which you told Ms. Clinton about the proposed plan to provide the Alpha Bank allegations to the media. Is that correct? Correct. And what was her response? All I remember is that she agreed with the decision. We told her we have this and we want to share it with a reporter. She agreed to that. When did this take place? I can't recall exactly when Hillary Clinton made the move. All I can remember is she agreed with the decision. She thought we made the right decision. And so again, if you've been following this case all along, well, then you might not be that surprised. However, this is the first true on-the-record account of this actually taking place. And it's also rather amazing to see how this political weapon was actually deployed. Because what happened shortly after the Clinton authorization is that someone from the campaign, from the Hillary campaign, took the false Trump-Russia collusion allegations to a reporter over at Slate Magazine, which is a left-leaning online publication, and they ran with it. In fact, they published this story here that you can see up on screen for yourself, titled, was a Trump server communicating with Russia? And the subhead for that article reads, quote, This spring, a group of computer scientists set out to determine whether hackers were interfering with the Trump campaign. They found something they weren't expecting. And as you can see, that article was published just five short days before the actual presidential election on the late afternoon of October 31st. And it's worth pointing out that nowhere in that article, nowhere within the actual text, does it mention that it took the FBI, quite literally, just one single day to realize that these allegations had absolutely no merit. But that didn't really matter, because within hours of publication, the Clinton campaign amplified that article's reach a thousandfold. That's because one of Hillary Clinton's senior policy advisor, a man by the name of Jake Sullivan, you might recognize him, he's the guy in the Biden administration who's now giving all these briefings about imminent war with Russia. Well, back then, he issued an official statement from the Clinton campaign, which said this in part, quote, this could be the most direct link yet between Donald Trump and Moscow. Computer scientists have apparently uncovered a covert server linking the Trump organization to a Russian-based bank. 
The secret hotline may be the key to unlocking the mystery of Trump's ties to Russia. It certainly seems the Trump Organization felt it had something to hide, given that it apparently took steps to conceal the link when it was discovered by journalists. And then, going even further beyond just that statement, Ms. Hillary Clinton herself shared that message on Twitter and added this, quote, Computer scientists have apparently uncovered a covert server linking the Trump Organization to a Russian-based bank. And notice that nowhere in those two messages did either Jake Sullivan nor Hillary Clinton mention that they were the ones to actually hand that information to the reporter. They also did not mention that one of Hillary Clinton's campaign lawyers, well, he was peddling the same information to both the CIA as well as the FBI, while at the same time billing the Clinton campaign for the hours that he spent doing so. And that going even further than that, these allegations themselves, they came from a tech executive who had a vested interest in getting Hillary Clinton elected. That's because Mr. Rodney Joffe, who is the tech executive behind the actual Trump-Russia bank allegations, well, he said that if Hillary Clinton was elected, he would be assigned a top cybersecurity job by the Democrats. Here's specifically what this tech executive said, according to John Durham's indictment. Quote, I was tentatively offered the top cybersecurity job by the Democrats when it looked like they'd win. I definitely would not take the job under Trump. And so again, all this information, all this stuff happening in the background was absolutely hidden from public view. And instead, the national conversation was usurped and the public was gaslit into thinking that President Trump was quite literally a puppet of the Russian state. And the repercussions of that are something that we're still living with today. That's because this Trump-Russia narrative that Hillary Clinton sanctioned did enormous harm to the country in many ways. It disgraced the FBI, who doubled down even harder after the truth came to light. It humiliated the media, who never corrected themselves after the truth came to light. It sent the country on a three-year-long investigation to nowhere, which cost the taxpayers about $40 million at least. It hampered the first two years of a democratically elected administration, meaning the Trump administration. And then lastly, because of the anti-Russian sentiment that these allegations created throughout the entire country, it put a real wedge in any type of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Now, it might be a far stretch to say that Russia would not invade Ukraine, a far, far stretch, but think about it. At the very least, if over the past six years, instead of this Trump-Russia collusion fiction, if instead there was a concerted effort to normalize relations, to pull Russia closer to the West and outside the orbit of China, and to strengthen the communication channels between Washington and Moscow, well, who knows what the world would be like right now. But instead, we got what we got which was a two-year-long investigation led by Bob Mueller, which raises a very important question that I believe also needs to be answered, which is how could it be that Bob Mueller spent two years investigating the Trump-Russia collusion story with a team of 19 lawyers, $40 million in resources, 40 FBI agents, 2,800 subpoenas, 500 search warrants, and 500 witnesses, and somehow he did not find out that it was Hillary Clinton who authorized the dissemination of the Trump Alpha Bank story. It really, really makes you wonder how that could have happened. Regardless, there was another testimony last Friday during the Durham trial which showed us, at least in part, what would have happened if the FBI was aware of Hillary's involvement. This testimony, it came from Mr. James Baker, who used to be general counsel for the FBI. He now works for Twitter, actually. And on the witness stand, he said that back in 2016, he would not have met with Mr. Michael Sussman if he had known that Mr. Sussman was actually acting on behalf of the Clinton campaign. Here's specifically what he said on the witness stand. Quote, I don't think I would have. Knowing Trump's opponent was behind the allegations would have raised very serious questions, certainly about the credibility of the source and the veracity of the information. It would also have heightened a substantial concern in my mind about whether we were going to be played. Absent Sussman's false statement, the FBI might have taken additional or more incremental steps before opening and or closing an investigation. I was willing to meet with Michael alone because I had high confidence in him and trust. I think I would have made a different assessment if he said he had been appearing on behalf of a client. And so the Durham saga continues with more witness testimony scheduled for the remainder of this week. And so we'll just have to wait and see what more comes out of this all, and more importantly, whether anyone will actually be held accountable. If you'd like to read more about anything that we've discussed thus far in today's episode, including both testimonies that we read, I'll throw all that down into the description box below this video for you to check out. And all I ask in return is that you take a super quick moment to smash, smash, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. That way you can get this type of honest news content delivered directly into your YouTube feed every single weekday. And now, let's move. Sorry. What's this? Of course it's secure because we use the Secure app, which is the sponsor of today's episode, as well as an awesome email and message service provider that actually cares about your privacy. 
Now listen, it's no big secret that our data is being mined and remined all the time. In fact, there was a recent study that was published in the year 2020, which found that 155 million Americans, likely including you and me, have suffered some form of data breach. And frankly, that's only what's publicly known. However, all those past problems with privacy issues and data mining, well, that can be an issue of the past because moving forward, you can use the Secure app, which both your messages, your emails, and your phone calls can remain private. That's because they have their servers and their data centers located in Switzerland instead of in the US or China or Russia. And why does that matter? Because Switzerland has the strictest data privacy laws in the entire world, and they are not subject to the intrusive Cloud app. Now, what I love the most about the Secure app is that they don't collect my data, they don't mine my data, they don't mine the data and phone numbers of my friends and family. Everything is private. And best of all, at least in my opinion, this does not work with your big tech email provider just because it is not secure. And so, and so check it out. You can head on over to secure.com and if you use promo code Roman, you can get 25% off. And frankly, their rates are not even that expensive. It only starts with $5 for the messenger and $10 for the email and messenger combo. And best of all, they offer a seven day free trial. And now in closing, I'd like to mention once again that Facts Matter is now available in podcast form. And so if you listen to podcasts on platforms like Apple, on Google, or on Spotify, well, you can find our episodes on there as well. And frankly, it's going pretty well. We topped out at number 64 on the podcast chart for news commentary in the U.S. at least on the Apple podcast, which is not bad considering that we've been only uploading there for about two and a half months but those are still quite frankly rookie numbers. And the way that those algorithms work is that if you don't get enough uh, traction going within a certain period of time, you actually fall in the rankings. And so it's this kind of constant back and forth. And so if you listen to podcasts, I certainly hope that you go on over to Apple, to Spotify and to Google, subscribe to Facts Matter, check it out, and perhaps even consider leaving a five-star review. Now, of course, you can leave any amount of stars that you want, but ideally a five-star review would help us in the rankings to get us all the way up to the top. Again, if you want to check them out, I will throw the links to all the different podcast formats down into the description box below. And the reason that we're doing this, frankly, is because YouTube is a great platform to reach a lot of people, but it's like building a castle on sand because at any moment, some latte sipping young 20 something year old in Silicon Valley can look at our content and say, hey, wait a minute. This might be the exact testimony from the Durham trial, but I don't like the way that it makes Hillary Clinton look. And therefore we will shadow ban your video or just give your channel a strike for some odd reason. And it'll be that hard. It'll be hard to appeal. And then you will just not know about it because our channel won't be able to upload content and then you just won't know what happens to us. And that's why we're trying to build all these other channels. So that way, if anything ever does happen here on YouTube, you can at least listen to this show on podcast format. If you want to check us out on Rumble, you can do so there as well. We're up on Instagram, on Twitter, on Getter, on Truth Social. Uh, in fact, I'll throw all the links to all the different um, all the different social media platforms that we're on down into the description box below. That way, if anything ever does happen here on YouTube, you can always know where to find us. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed and stay free.